Welcome back to CIOs and Bowties. This is part two of our discussion with the turnaround and restructuring expert, um, Adam Cohen. Uh, the reason for my pause, Adam, is I, I remember back in the hedge fund days, um, they used to tell me that um, the best short sellers were, were grisly old men who had been, you know, who had been through a number of cycles and kind of that that uh, vision came to mind when I was uh, talking about restructuring and turnaround and you're not grisly and uh, you're, you're not very old. So, <laughs> um, tell us a little <laughs> Getting bit about, there quickly. yeah, I believe it. Um, tell us about the, okay. Tell us a little bit about the tur- the workout and turnaround space as it is today and, and how it's, you know, how it's changed, let's say in the, in the last year, if at all. Yeah, definitely. I think um, I, I think it depends on a on a case by case basis. Um, you know what I can definitely say is when when we like to come in and when we do the best is when um, you know owners or lenders or or you know, owners and lenders together recognize that they're um, heading towards a problem and they call us in. And, you know, typically we come in, the first thing that we want to do is build, you know, a 13 week cash forecast to understand, you know, do, do we have a little bit of runway? Do, you know, can we, can we get a few months in? Are we generating cash? Are we burning cash? Um, and then move on to, you know, better understanding, um, you know, recent, you know, P&Ls, uh, building out, you know, more of a pro forma, you know, 12 month to 24 month model. And, and from there, understanding, you know, where are we, um, you know, from a performance basis versus, you know, our, our liabilities on the balance sheet. Um, and, you know, are, are we in line? Are we out of line? Um, can we get back in line? Um, and what runway by means of potentially additional funding do we need to get there? And, and, and then from there, we, we can make the assessment that says, you know, these are the areas that we would hit, you know, to, you know, fairly simply increase revenue and reduce costs. Um, so, you know, making the list of priorities and, you know, where we can help, we do. And where we can't help, we recommend others uh, that, that may be more efficient than we are or more specialized than we are uh, when that's the case. Um, you know, I think that works when uh, both the owners and the lenders um, a understand where they are and fully, you know, full or fully on board with the reality Mm -hmm. and um, really doesn't work well, you know, when, when either we're brought in, you know, too late or uh, the lenders are, you know, unable or unwilling to, to, you know, work with the company or are unable or unwilling to kind of accept the reality of where their, um, you know, loan or investment stands. Okay. And how, how have you seen the nature of your business change over, over the last year? And, and kind of, it's, it's a bit of a loaded question because my understanding of being in the private credit space is that lending standards have actually declined over, let's say the last 18 months, 24 months. So, Speak a little bit about that and how does that kind of feed into your business? Yeah, well, I think um, we're probably not seeing it as quickly as that. Um, you know, a lot of the, the deals that we're coming into are ones where, you know, the lending took place in the last probably two to three years. So it's kind of hard to see what all of the, the latest loans uh, may be doing. Um, and, and that might be something that we see in the next, you know, 12 to 24 months. Um, we've had some, some recent activity in, um, franchise restaurant space, um, you know, with, with deals that, that frankly, the, the buyer just overpaid and, and really wasn't, uh, qualified to grow out of, um, you know, and, and I think that's just a prime example that that was franchise businesses were ones where, you know, more um, institutional money, private equity firms just really shied away from. 
uh, the margins were too low, the brands, you know, were being controlled by somebody else, the, the purchases and sales were not something that they could generally control. And, um, you know, they, they, you know, private equity would buy the franchise or, but they wouldn't buy franchisees. And, um, you know, that's something that I think as everyone has looked for more, uh, opportunities for yield, that's, you know, one that's opened up. And, and I think there are people who do a really good job at it. They've got good operations and, um, there, there are ones that don't. And I, I think there are brands that are doing really well. And I think there are brands that, that aren't. And so, um, you know, we, we've, we, we actually, in, in that case, we saw one where um, two different loans were done in the last 12 months. And, uh, you know, both of them, you know, are now, are now selling uh, way below the, uh, the, the loan balance. Okay. Um, who, who, who would be the lenders? I mean, you don't have to name who they are, but generally what category of lenders would be to these, these franchises? Is it private credit lenders? Is it private equity or is it bank debt? Um, you know, we're, we're seeing, uh, both private lenders and, and, and frankly, bank debt in, in some of these, you know, either it was, you know, SBA approved or is the, you know, just mm -hmm. a, a normal note from the bank. And, um, you know, I think it speaks to your point about, you know, uh, more loose, underwriting of, of some of these deals. Okay. Tell us a little bit about the trucking industry. I know that's an industry you've been in. So the, you know, transportation and logistics industry, what's, what stands out for you in that, in that business? Will regale us with some stories about that? Sure. No, I, I think it's a, it's an extremely interesting business. It, um, the, it, it, it what I've seen is there are some very high highs and some fairly low lows, um, mostly related to um, pricing, where, you know, when, when you do get the capacity constraints, um, when the driver shortages are impacting the ability to, you know, keep enough trucks on the road and, you know, consumer demand is at, you know, all time highs. Uh, the pricing can go through the roof and, you know, basically every trucker in out there should be making money. Um, doesn't matter if your cost structure is upside down, you can still make money just because your rate per mile is so good. Um, but those are, are typically fairly short lived. It's an extremely fragmented business with fairly low barriers to entry. So, you know, when that happens, driver pay starts going up. So more drivers come into the market. Um, trucking companies replace their trucks and start adding to their fleet um, to, to add capacity to, you know, take advantage of all of this demand. And um, as soon as it resets, the, you know, those, those um, peak prices fall off fairly quickly. And, um, you know, it, it ends up being those trucking companies that have, you know, 98% of their trucks, you know, on leases, uh, with leased trailers and, you know, you know, maybe, maybe not the best cost structure, especially from an insurance perspective that, um, you know, that the, they can't withstand the, um, the dips. Um, you, you get into operational issues too, with just, you know, utilization of the truck and making sure that, uh, you know, you're running full as, as, as much as possible. And, and, actually watching those metrics. It's amazing how, um, how many companies are out there that, that likely are not uh, tracking that mm -hmm. on a daily and weekly basis. But, um, but, but yeah, I mean, you really have to have the right, the right cost structure to be able to, um, and the right debt structure to be able to, you know, not only do well in the good times, but to be able to withstand the, you know, one to two, sometimes three year dips. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Um, let's take one more short break. When we come back, I really want to probe Adam about, you know, uh, what he thinks of uh, the future looking forward, how we as investors could, could possibly be making money in a, in a distressed environment. So please uh, just hang with us.